Hey friends! At some point, we've all had a crush on a friend and worried about ruining the friendship. How did you handle it? Today, we'll look at Dear Abby's advice, and I'll tell you what I would suggest instead. <laughs> I'm Leah Carey, a schmex and relationship coach, and today we're talking about the good, the bad, and the downright terrible advice Dear Abby offers to her readers. What about you? Do you swear by Dear Abby or at Dear Abby? Let's dive in and we'll find out. Interested in Texas writes, Dear Abby, I'm a gay man who lost my domestic partner five years ago. My neighbor is a single father. He does small jobs at my house and I've taken him and his son out to dinner. He writes messages to me about three times a week. He treats me kindly. I think he may be interested in me, but I don't want to be presumptuous. If I'm misinterpreting the situation, I would be satisfied with being friends and good neighbors. But I'd like to find out if he wants to pursue a relationship. What would you recommend I do? And Abby responds, Dear Interested, I recommend you stand pat. Be his friend and a good neighbor until he makes a move that clearly indicates he would like more. In this case, Abby's advice is okay. It's not terrible, but I would suggest that there's another way to handle it that will actually get you closer to what you desire. Because here's the problem. We don't know what this neighbor's orientation is in the letter the writer says that um, the man has had female partners, but has also talked about a domestic partnership, which begs the question of what gender that person might have been. So we have no idea what his background is. There is a strong possibility that if he is interested, that this may be the first time he has considered anything like that. This can be a really big moment for people when they first realize that they have a same-sex attraction or an attraction to somebody other than they would have expected. And one of the ways that we can support them through that process is letting them know that we are a safe person and that we welcome them into that sphere if that's where they want to be. Here's one way that that conversation could sound. I am really enjoying spending time with you and your son. In fact, it's kind of a highlight of my week. And I also really enjoy the conversations that we're having. Now, I am kind of notoriously terrible at reading a vibe. So I just wanted to sort of put it out there that I think think that you've sort of presented yourself to me as primarily straight, but also it seems like maybe there's a bit of a vibe here. Now, I don't want to make any assumptions and your friendship is so much more important to me than anything else. But if you have questions or if there's anything you've been thinking about, I wanted to let you know that I'm happy to be a friend a sounding board, uh, you know, whatever it is that you might need, I'm here for it. Now, you haven't put onto the table, I'm looking for a relationship with you, but you've opened the door to a conversation. And I honestly rely tremendously on this, I'm terrible at reading a vibe because it's entirely true. I am god awful at reading a vibe. So for me, that is an entirely truthful statement. And it's something that I have said on multiple occasions. And it usually helps me to open the conversation that I want to have or that I'm curious about. And it does it in such a way that the other person can say, yeah, I am feeling that or, oh, you know what, that's actually not going on. In which case I can say, Great. Totally 
totally didn't mean to make anything uncomfortable. Let's just forget we had this conversation. Allowing people an opportunity to enter a no pressure conversation and also letting them know that saying no is a perfectly acceptable option gives them a sort of safe space to land. Too often, we get invitations that feel more like expectations. Like, I am going to invite you to do this thing, but if you don't, I'm going to be hurt. It's going to mess up our friendship. If I put out this, you know, uh, what is what is it? The fig leaf? I don't, well, whatever that thing is that you offer to people. Um, olive tree, dove, I don't know, something. Um, but I'm going to offer this to you with the understanding that you are not responsible for accepting it if it's not something that you want. That is a really gentle and kind way to open this conversation. If the neighbor accepts that opening, once the conversation is on the table, then it can progress in whatever its natural time is. But saying, I'm just going to sit here and wait and see if anything ever happens is potentially a situation where you're sitting, waiting, while your desire and your fantasies about what is possible grow, and also potential resentment grows that you're not getting what you want, and maybe you're putting other people off because you're waiting for this one. There's like all of this stuff that can be going on in your head if you're determined to just sit at home and wait. Meanwhile, the other person has absolutely no idea that there is this interaction going on that they are part of, but not even aware of. And it could begin to affect your relationship with them so that they start feeling awkward and not knowing why. You're putting it out on the table so that they can say, yeah, this is something I would like to talk about. And then maybe over time that progresses. Or no, you know what, that's actually not in my mind at all. But more often than not, people are grateful for the opening to a conversation. Presumably, this person is well aware that interested in Texas is gay. And so he's probably not going to have a wildly homophobic reaction to to having the conversation open. It might make him a little bit uncomfortable, but the more that interested in Texas can say, it's okay. I really just wanted to give you this space. The more that the neighbor can relax back into the friendship and things can go on as they have been with everybody being clear what the boundaries are. So what about you? What do you think? Do you agree with Abby's advice? Do you agree with my advice? Uh, head down to the comments. Let me know. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell. And also, if this type of honest and transparent conversation is of interest to you, but it feels unclear how you might approach it, I have a class that you might like. It's called How to Talk About Sex, Maybe for the First Time. It's designed to help you get comfortable with naming what you want and feeling confident in saying it out loud, just like we've done with Interested in Texas, so that you can have conversations that truly connect you with a person you're interested in, with your current partner, with a new partner with long-term partners. Really, it's an opportunity to begin getting comfortable with saying the words out loud because really that's the scariest part. A link to that class is on the screen now and it's in the description. So until next time, remember, you're worthy of love and I want to help you get there one conversation at a time.